Today, uh, Democrats face backlash after pictures emerge of National Guardsmen in very, very poor living conditions in D.C. and uh, more impeachment talk. Uh, Pelosi to deliver impeachment article to Senate on Monday. Oh, boy, you guys thought that the fun was over, but really it's just beginning. Happy Friday. The news and why it matters starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. I told you guys that I was going to be back on Friday in my pajamas and I almost am. I almost am. It's the end of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, uh, joined by my friends, Yaku Buyans, host of the Yaku Buyans show Mm. and Eric July, a Blaze TV contributor, also YouTube host for now. Until he so like gets kicked me off. Right. I, mean, I got my first strike not too long ago. Did so, you? Yes, I did for medical misinformation. Oh, really? Yes. We're gonna, yeah. We're gonna help you, Eric. We're gonna help you. That's a great one. I love one. you. Look, Africa today. I like this. Thank you. <laughs> you well, he's. You're allowed to say that because you're. You're. I have two African. Literal African American. Yeah, I'm not even an Af- I, 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 I've never been to Africa. Do you this know how much literal, I love this? This is a literal African American. You know how much I love I have an African American on the show, and it's this one. <laughs> he's the only African American. Born and raised, two passports. I love you, brother. You look, he's the, you look, he's the, look, the only African American at the table. Thank you. I'm a safari. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, Going on a safari. I, I killed this and now I'm wearing it. Just kidding, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Democrats have started to face backlash online after photographs emerged uh, yesterday of National Guardsmen being forced to sleep in parking garages and they had very minimal access to uh, restrooms and other essential items. Uh, these are, of course, the National Guardsmen who were brought to D.C. amid fears of rioting uh, during the inaugural uh, session. So that's over now. It's still kind of, we're unclear why the National Guardsmen are still there. But one freshman congressman, Madison Cawthorn, uh, was very upset about the National Guardsmen being in the parking garages. He brought them pizza, said that they deserved respect, and told them that they could sleep in his office if they needed to. Watch. Former President Trump still feels weird to say. Trump also said that uh, these National Guardsmen were welcome to stay in his Trump Hotel in D.C. Uh, And also, Governors Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott, also Chris Sununu, said that they are bringing their National Guard troops back from D.C., their statesmen, back uh, after these reports surfaced. They said there's absolutely no reason for it, and they need to be back home. But the others are still there. Uh, Yaku, your thoughts? Yeah. Look, what is it? Three days after an inauguration, and we've got troops sleeping on concrete. If that doesn't say something to you, that in somewhere in this genius planning process of having 20-something thousand troops show up going, can we take care of them? Mm. Can they maybe sleep on a mattress? Maybe? Nah, it's not that important. They're just here to serve us. They're just offering their lives up. And we let the guy who lost his legs serving the country bring him some pizza. Mm. You know, who are they? The underlings you know, out here on the side. This should, look, this should appall military families. And why are they still there, right? You know, yeah. Immediately, day after, why don't you come home? But just a little, the little detail next time in the planning, Mr. President, maybe just get your guest, the people that give their lives to your nation, right? And I'm looking at that scenario and go, does, does that pass the, the COVID muster? Mm-hmm. You know, 
the social distancing. Oh, no, no, it's our troops. It doesn't really matter. And if they get sick, we'll get another one. Someone else will sign up to come and give their life for this country. It's appalling. When you see these images, it's disgusting that, that look, and you go, yuck, it's not so bad. No, it's the sentiment. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that I get when I look at it that go, it's just a little detail that was just passed by. Yeah. Where are they going to sleep? No, it's not that important. It does seem, Eric, that uh, it's a stark contrast from the previous president who was, you know, he was very uh, pro-military. He was very respectful to military. I know that there was a report that surfaced that was completely anonymous and cowardly that said, oh, he called the military members names. Uh, but like most of the fake news that comes from CNN and those places, it was never actually verified personally. I could never picture President Trump doing something like this. Interested to get your perspective, however. I know you are the uh, full-blown libertarian yeah, at the table. Yeah. So what's your perspective? Well, see, no. Um, I think what people are seeing in that is that this is how they see them regardless. The, I mean, just, I hate to say this. I know it's a harsh reality. I come from a family of a bunch of military folk. Mm. But you are state agents. You are their underlings. You are there to do a particular job, and they'll send you over to die. Congress, we already know how they literally sign off on exactly that, right, all the time. So they don't give a damn about your health or anything like that. What they, your only purpose is to protect them. This is why the severe overreaction unlike anything that we've really seen right where this supposed insurrection or, or siege or coup that was for the most part completely unarmed where they people kicked their feet up on nancy pelosi's desk and that became something that they were like oh no they they, they went and actually went to our holy sacred ground uh our, our beloved cathedral so they went and sent all those guys just to make sure that, of course, they are protected. They don't even give you as a citizen that sort of uh, protection. But what you are seeing, and I hope folks understand this, like when libertarians talk about the military, yes, we are anti-war, you know, and more so anti, more, more so anti like inter interventionalism, um, nation building and all this sort of stuff, which you've seen with America's foreign policy over the course of the last decades. Why you I mean, some of the most prominent libertarians, I mean, are former military folk because they saw that, you know, firsthand, they experienced that firsthand. And that's the harsh reality where you go in, you may think that your job is to are you going in at with a I, I can understand the sentiment. You want to protect your fellow man. That's more so what it is. But the reality of the situation is they do not offer the people that will send you to go do their bidding. They don't give you that that sort of care. They don't care about you the way that you think that you are caring about them or rather everybody it's else. It's not reciprocated. Right. So, no, not at all. It's the perfect term uh, that it's not. It is certainly not reciprocal when it comes to this. So I think what what, you, what you're seeing in that, I think it manifests itself in a lot of other ways. It's just that that's the most recent. That's the most blunt. That's the most obvious. So people are like, wow, that's some that, that, that's a problem here. But the reality to me is, you know, as I view it and as I viewed it for some time, well, that's how they've always treated that particular class. Mm -hmm. Like you serve your purpose. Your purpose is to protect them often, do their bidding, not us right. uh, in, in that regards. Because, again, they don't send they're not going to send these people. What happens when they burn your businesses down and and all of that sort of stuff? And people were even calling for the National Guard and they're not quite often. No. They didn't show up. It's only until, again, they kicked their feet up on Nancy Pelosi's death. So you went to the holy sacred ground of the cathedral of criminals, and then that's when it became an issue. So. Look, I, I think something that has to be said, uh, and I can tell you right now, the troops, men and women that are in that parking garage, they're not complaining. Right. They're not the ones complaining. We're, we're complaining on their behalf because they're saying, look, I'm trying to go do a job. I'll go sleep in the middle of Afghanistan. I'll go to Fallujah and sleep on dirt. And yes. Yeah, I serve. Yeah, but I'm sure when they're in D.C., they don't expect in to be in, in the parking right. garage. It's just different. <laughs> yeah. But they won't complain. Right. Okay. So we got to do that for them. And you're right. It, this is just an obvious display. But, but more so, the contrast you're talking about is Tr President Trump came in, former President Trump came in, and took care of them. Mm -hmm. Whether After it is, eight years with, under with, Obama. Exactly. Whether it is cutting lines at the VA. You think they're going to take care of them at the VA when they're bleeding, when they mm -hmm. can't even let them sleep on a mattress? Come on, this is a foreshadow. This is how you foreshadow it in, in a movie what happens later on, right? Mm -hmm. This is a great foreshadow. And again, it's days. It's like one of the first acts. Like a, during your inauguration, like, nah, it's, skip that detail. 
Yeah, and it was interesting to see because for as much as the Democrats played up, oh my gosh, there's there might be some right wing insurgency. You know, all of those white supremacists are planning something. Well, said, now need... they say the libertarians too. John really? Brennan said that on uh, really? formerly of CIA. Uh, he said that uh, on MSNBC the other day. I recently covered it where he threw libertarians in there. He said, and even libertarians said we're coming up with these like uh, insurgency groups is what he, <laughs> what he said. Much like we see overseas, basically calling us damn terrorists. Right. Uh, that's what he said. And he literally said. And libertarians. I've been trying to tell y'all when they say that they, everybody else is the enemy. It has nothing to do with uh, when they say conservative, white supremacists, fascists. Those are just buzz terms. Yeah. They're talking about all of us. It's everybody but them. Bingo. Yes. yes. And you have to wear, wonder where Brennan got his information from. But, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, for all the talk about how there were going to be right wing and libertarian, you know, insurgents, the only rioting and, you know, uh, criminal acts I saw came from Antifa mm -hmm. in Oregon, mm -hmm. who were breaking windows of mm -hmm. the Democrat uh, headquarters over there who were basically daring the police to do anything to them. Um, but it's interesting because I didn't hear any coverage of that on the same mainstream media networks who told us that all of these white supremacists were going to try to uh, violently take over. I don't know, maybe George Soros just figured, I don't have to do it anymore. We've got the White House now, so I'm not gonna pay and radicalize and get piles of bricks set up and infiltrate the mega march, you know? So mm -hmm. Soros just took the weekend off and it's funny. There were no riots. Mm. That we got paid to go burn things down. You know, in a little faction over here with Antifa Seattle has lost his mind, by yeah. the way. That yeah. city is falling off a cliff. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, the, the puppeteers just said, okay, job done, go on vacay. I guess so, I guess so, but. Something. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. Something. And, and Antifa, um, they actually had flyers that they, um, like they planned this and put flyers up around the city just like they, claimed that uh, Republicans were doing, these right-wing nut jobs were doing, uh, and Antifa actually did it. We yep. knew that it was going to happen, and still they just allowed it to happen. Well, no. that's because, look, it's textbook gaslighting, mm -hmm. and this is when I've been covering this, this whole entire ordeal for the last year, certainly post-George Floyd, is that how, when it comes to the corporate press, which are the enemies of the people as far as I'm concerned, um, you have like the your mainstream progressives, you have your, your Democrats, everybody, the ABCs, NBCs, MSNBCs, all of those guys. Um, it's textbook gaslighting. Yeah. We know that it's like what you see, your eyes see. It's like it's not a it's thing. It's not there. Yeah. It's not don't, even there. Don't believe your so eyes. like I said, it was just hilarious to me that we looked at that supposed siege uh, and, and something that happened on one day for a couple of hours <laughs> and they want you to completely ignore what it took place, everything after, you know, the George Floyd situation. Mm -hmm. And it happened all across the nation. For We're talking months. about months, billions, literally billions of dollars. Lives worth of lost. About lives lost. Lives like lost. 20, 20, 20, like 20 or so people had died during all People's of that. People's livelihoods L lost. Livelihoods lost, uh, looting everything mm -hmm. out of their businesses, both big and small. And they want you to see, like, it's not a thing, right? It's like, don't pay attention to that, right? Don't know. No, no. Oh, look at this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They, they could, they attacked our cathedral. Like, oh my, oh my God, how, how could they do, they could do that. Look at this violent nut jobs, these, these right wing people that are going to, to attack our democracy, which is one hilarious thing. It's kind of a side note, how all of a sudden when you're not attacking yourself or you're not attacking your fellow neighbor, when you go loot everything out of the business that you work at exactly. own or shop. Right. But when you go, I yeah. will keep saying this, yeah. kick your feet up on Nancy Pelosi's <laughs> desk. Now all of a sudden you're attacking you, us, now you our war. democracy. Yeah. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't even like y'all. Y'all don't like me. So that's that's kind of what we're dealing with here, though, and why I always say that we're, we're playing a rigged game here. Because it's gaslighting. They, all of that stuff we yeah. know exists. We see it. We have our, we have our own Elijah Schaefer mm -hmm. half the time on the ground, boots on the ground, covering it for us. We see the video, but it's like it doesn't even happen. Yeah. And that's, yeah. how they, that's how they win. Yeah. Uh, all right. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Bonner Wines. If uh, anyone here likes to have a drink every once in a while, perhaps you have children. Me too. That's why I'm drinking this Friday. Uh, how about you make that drink you're going to have 
10 times healthier, okay? Because you know I'm all about the health as well. Well, down in Argentina, they make this really dark red wine from Malbec grapes grown at 9,000 feet. Um, I wouldn't want to go there because I'm scared of heights, so I'm glad they do all the work and then bring it down to me to drink. They've lab tested these wines and found that they contain up to 10 times the levels of longevity and heart health nutrient called resveratrol. All right, resveratrol is very powerful stuff. It pops up again and again and again in studies on longevity, heart health, brain health. Am I selling this to you yet? Because you're like, if you want, if you like to enjoy a good glass of wine and you also want to stay healthy, or maybe you have a spouse who's like, you really need to eat and drink healthier. Shut them up with this. You're like, okay, I'll be healthy. I'll drink the wine that has 90% less sugar and fewer chemicals and fewer additives. All right. Done. Sold. All right. And this also pairs very well with uh, barbecue. And by the way, red wine has been shown to actually make red meat healthier. They also taste great. Make sure that you get it at cowgirlwine2021.com. They are giving you 50% off right now of their best Malbecs and 50% off of shipping. That is huge, guys. You got to take advantage of this deal. It also makes a great gift. All you have to do is go to cowgirlwine2021.com today. Make your wine healthier with cowgirlwine2021.com. Back in a minute. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will deliver an article of impeachment against uh, President, former President Donald Trump to the Senate on Monday. And uh, this was Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer who was announcing this Friday. Um, let me just, I, we do have a clip of Chuck Schumer uh, announcing this and a little bit of his speech, but let me just go through this timeline. Uh, Senate Minority Leader, these, these are all new terms. I feel so weird reading them like this. Mitch McConnell proposed postponing the impeachment trial until mid-February to give time to Trump's legal team to come up with a defense to House impeachment managers' accusations, which is really great that we would be delaying it that much longer after the man leaves office. So yeah. it's good. I mean, there's nothing else important going on no. in the country like that we should be focusing on. Right. Yeah. I mean, we definitely should be impeaching and going through the motions with someone uh, who's already freaking gone. But uh, Chuck Schumer had a little oopsie uh, when he was delivering his speech on the floor of the Senate. Here is Chuck Schumer, watch. Fair trial, but make no mistake, there will be a trial and when that trial ends, senators will have to decide if they believe Donald John, Donald John Trump incited the erection, insurrection against the United States. Now, over the course of, of elections in November and January, the American people chose to retire four Republican senators and elect a Democratic majority to this Senate. The Senate must now take the basic step of passing an organ. All right, I don't know if he's being accused of inciting an erection or inciting an insurrection. I don't know. I just, if you have incited an insurrection that lasts longer than four hours, you probably <laughs> should go see a doctor. I, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Chuck Schumer with a very unfortunate Freudian slip, I guess. Oopsie, Chuck. Uh, but yes, they are still know. going through with this. Maybe he took his Roman pills that morning. I guess so. All that was on the mind. What was on your mind when, you were, thinking, your mind? when you were thinking of Donald Trump, Chucky? Uh -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, this is they're really going to do this. Yeah, they're going to they do it. Really they're going to do it to a guy, President Trump, who's no longer in the White House. And, and um, we know why. I mean, I can, I can assume why. They want to make sure, according to you know, the, the rules, mm -hmm. which they never follow, that he can't run again. Right. And so here we go again uh, with the rhinos in the GOP. But this time around, oh, that's right. They lost the do Senate. You, do you think that he would want to run again? Because I know that that, that rumor kind of surfaced. You never heard it from him, no. but the rumor surfaced and spread, and I never saw him as wanting to run again. I mean, he would be what? 80? 80. Yeah. He would, he would be 80 He'd only be two years older than what Biden is now. Let's well, Biden. let's look at what Biden's yeah. like, yeah. right? Yeah. I but, mean. But I, I'd say this. I don't think, and I'm not saying this on any, with any, with, with any information, you know, but I don't think he would want to run again. I don't think so either. This is, this is insult to injury.
I, I don't That's think he expected is. to win yeah. the first time. They I want, certainly don't think he would run. They him. want insult to add insult to yes. injury here. Yes. It's a point, you know. It's yeah. just it's that insane group of people with a, like a dog on a bone that can't go, you know, making a point and driving a point. It was almost like they want to beat the Trump followers into submission and say, see, we beat your guy so bad, yeah. right? He can never run again. I don't think he... Personally, I don't think he wanted to run again. Yeah. I think, if anything, there was probably other members of the family, right, that right, were, that they want to that were thinking of running again, and, and this is a wider blow, I think. Yeah. Which I think is going to blow back. Okay. So. Because I'm just saying, when, when, look, they've had a victory here by hook or crook, okay, and now you keep going after a guy, you're going to force the guy to become an enemy. Eric. Yeah, I think it's less about him running uh, again and more about they want to stomp out anything that was him. So it's more about imagery. It's the, t- it's the TDS yes, too, right? It, it, yeah, yeah it, it's more of symbolism mm-hmm. than yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's they feel like Trump, Trump's types, his supporters um, are they're not supposed to be there and uh, they don't want to welcome them back. So it's more of it uh, of a point to try to make that this guy was so so different, so against the grain, so against the rules and as far as how they do things that they want to make sure that it's it's understood that, OK, this person is, is objectively bad. It's according to them and they want to stomp it all out. That's more so what it is. It's, it's to me, it's less about him running again. But, you know, this is when I when I see stuff like this go down and I'm looking at Joe Biden, like, for example, the other day, uh, yet again with his Defense Protection Act, which is literal fascism, by the way. Uh, yes, Trump used it as well. Um, but this whole merge of corporate entities and, and state, which is what fascism is. Fascism is not bad people that you feel are right wing. <laughs> a, it has a literal definition uh, stemming from Giovanni Gentile and, um, uh, you know, Mussolini. Uh, guys that actually do their research would know this. But... What we're seeing right now is that, that, that one entity, right, that, that federal government, as big, as strong, as powerful as it is, that will waste everybody's time and everybody's money to put on a show for all of us to see. And then we get here at the round table and discuss it. I have been calling for GOP members for, I don't know, a while now. Ever. Forever. Yeah, forever. If you led with a, we wouldn't be having this discussion if on the top of your platform was decentralization. I don't see how anybody can look at this, the the state of America right now and think that we can't come up with a damn better alternative to a bunch of almost said something. If it was on my show, I would say something. (laughs) But a bunch of people that you are have absolutely no connection to. You recognize that your neighbor's probably stupid, yet they get to vote and their vote counts just as much as yours. So stupid people get to vote for people that fill positions of power. And then they get here and they have this show wasting everybody's time and money with this impeachment bull crap and everything else, you know, spending money on the, the, the gender studies in, in Pakistan and stuff like that. That's what they get to do. Maybe there's something wrong with this and maybe I've been making the you argument think? that it's time for a divorce. I know that some people are so, people like my fellow <laughs> colleagues over at Blaze, including a beloved Glenn, has been so hell bent on saving the republic. I disagree. There's nothing to repair here. It is a fundamental, functional problem. And what people are seeing now is more eyes on it because they thought that the, the Trump was going to be able to at least somehow fix it. And if that man couldn't do it, Maybe it can't be done. Mm. So I am on on the opinion that maybe the GOP should be leading instead of trying to play this rigged game and inching us closer to absolute socialism. Maybe we try to pull the rug from under these idiots like Chuck Schumer. Yeah, but there's so many in the GOP that want socialism. Oh, absolutely. They just hide it. It's just a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, they they want 100 percent. They want that. It's all about them. But look, you're the game is rigged. Yes. But sometimes it's called lancing the boil. Sometimes you got to cut deep. Mm. deep mm. to get the cancer out yeah. and maybe that's what we've seen in 2020 is um, the poison is deep mm. it's not surface level you don't triage this country back into a some moral state of hey we are actually American and we are one nation you know you're gonna have to cut deep yeah. because it's infiltrated to that level on both sides on all sides you mm. know and so yeah it's surgery 
that's needed here. Yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of impeachment, really quickly uh, before we go to break, uh, GOP Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia apparently has officially filed articles of impeachment yesterday against President Biden. This was, of course, on his first full day of office. She said that uh, this is for his corrupt actions involving his quid pro quo in Ukraine and his abuse of power by allowing his son, Hunter Biden, to siphon off cash from America's greatest enemies, Russian and China, uh, Russia and China. So we will see what comes of this. I think all of us at the table know there is a lot of truth to this, but uh, you know, it's it's everything. The Democrats the control show, everything, man. so it is. It, it is. I think it's all for optics at this point. It'd be yep. nice if it happened. I'm just trying to be real with you. Yep. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere. But uh, before we get to more, we want to thank our sponsor, Bambi. This segment. If you are an entrepreneur and you are, uh, you know, you're running a business, especially in the day and age of COVID, you know that HR issues can kill you. They can bankrupt your company. You've got wrongful termination suits. You've got minimum wage requirements. You've got labor regulations to remember because you're dealing with big government here. So there's not just a tiny amount of regulations to remember. It's all regulations. And by the way, HR manager salaries are not cheap. They're like $70,000 a year on average. So Bambi was created specifically for you, the small business owner. You can get that dedicated HR manager. They can craft your HR policy. They can maintain your compliance. Make sure you know you're aware of all the regulations that affect you, all for $99 a month. Bambi will change your HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. This HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat, however you prefer to reach them. And they can customize your policies to fit your business, help you manage the day-to-day. -day. Again, it's $99 a month. So if you are looking to cut costs, maybe your business was shut down for a while and uh, you're, really, you're really hurting, maybe you're struggling to keep afloat, let Bambi help you save that money. Okay, you can get a free HR audit today from Bambi. You can go to Bambi.com slash matters right now, uh, or maybe at, at the very end of the show, go to Bambi.com slash matters to schedule that free HR audit. It is B-A-M-B-E-E dot -E -E com slash matters. Back in a minute. <clears throat> Twitter is facing a lawsuit from a minor who claims that the social media platform refused to remove child porn that featured him and another 13-year-old. Uh, the social media platform reviewed the graphic content and they said that they didn't find a violation of their policies. Uh, the lawsuit says it seeks to shine a light on how Twitter has enabled and profited from uh, CSAM on its platform, choosing profits over people, money over the safety of children, and wealth at the expense of human freedom and human dignity. By the way, CSAM is child sexual abuse material. It is interesting because this surfaces at the same time that Twitter is very, very, very worried about uh, deleting people who believe in freedom and small government. Yep. So making sure that those people are removed from the platform because they may or may not violate some policies, but apparently child porn A-OK -okay, according to Twitter. Yep. And you know, I got to get on a box here because what we fight every single day. What they're saying has truth to it, but it's so twisted because their policies is all about copyright. And what America doesn't know that if your child posts a selfie, a nude, through text message or whatever, whoever grabs it, your child has no copyright over that content. Mm -hmm. Zero. And we find this weekly. We're dealing with a case right now in Texas of 50 children. This is two. 50 implica uh, implicated where we mm -hmm. can't get images removed from YouTube from Twitter, from Facebook, because they go, there's no violation here. The person who owns the copyright, who published it, is in good standing with our company policy. Saying, wait a minute, I'm not talking about copyright. I'm talking about a naked child mm -hmm. being forced to perform sexual acts. Because in this case, what happened, a 13-year-old was coerced. Tell me about your body, what's your favorite part of your body, etc. It leads into a selfie, a nude, then a physical sexual act. And then it went to, can you bring a friend in? Brought a friend in, sex, all while all that content is going into a porno, mm -hmm. which the copyright owner now is publishing it on Twitter, and Twitter's going, nothing to see here, no violation of our copyright infringement policy. We're not talking copyright, we're talking about a child being sexually manipulated by an adult who's now the plaintiff and still a minor, 17. The mother is saying, wait, wait a minute, 
He was a minor. He's still a minor. And yes, it's boys as well. It's not just girls. Mm -hmm. so this is how big tech dances around this issue. And this is the reason. We have over a 180% increase of sexual content of minors on Facebook. They know this happens. It drives eyeballs to the site. Just take your Twitter. Don't tell your children. Take your t Twitter account. Go to your little glass, spy glass, and just type in the word porn. Just type it, search, as if you'd search for the news and why, which is what you should be searching, <laughs> right? But just type in the word porn and watch out, okay? It's hardcore. Yeah, I mean, don't type in the word porn. Hardcore. <laughs> to your yeah. point, yes. But now imagine, but imagine. Don't, you don't want to do that. Okay, so a 10-year-old with right. a cell phone can type it in. Right, right. This is how accessible it is, and they do zero because they hide behind this copyright infringement nonsense. And we've been fighting. We went all the way into the courts last year and got kicked out of the courts. And all we were fighting for is like, okay, if you're not going to stop you know, predatory behavior on Twitter, at least give the child who's in the picture limited copyright mm. okay, over her own content mm -hmm. so that she can get it removed when she wants to, so that five, 10 years later, right. it doesn't surface. In this case, over 260,000 views of this boy in, in sexually compromised positions. All his friends are making fun of him because now it's out there. Mm -hmm. And oh, sorry, you can't pull it because you don't own it, but it's me in there, you know, insane. Wow. Insane activity. Wow, Eric, I mean, uh, but hey, at least they've removed QAnon, right? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> other people um, as well. And it just goes to show that when it comes to the Facebooks of the world, as well as the Twitters, that caring or protecting the innocence of people, which is really all that when you talk about inciting violence and uh, all these supposed claims that they try to uh, place on anybody that doesn't seem to be a leftist. It's all bull crap, yeah. right? It was obviously politically driven. It had nothing to do with protecting anybody or stopping people from uh, committing violent acts up, upon anybody. It had nothing to do with it, nothing. Um, because of things like this that has existed prior to whatever happened in the Capitol building, because this has been a problem Absolutely. for Twitter and Facebook for a very long time in this particular subject of, of people, like you said, youngsters and sexually compromised uh, position and that stuff being easily, you know, accessible and also just going around the site. And there's no punishment uh, to those people that have anything to do with that stuff being put out there. But God forbid, I don't know, you say that there's a a, a, a high survival rate of, of, of COVID, and then in a minute you get right. kicked off the platform. Right. You see, because it, it has nothing to do with that. So I think more of what it proves is that uh, their motivations are politically motivated mm -hmm. when it comes to how they handle non-leftists on their site. It is, this is more confirmation of that. We've known that it, but you, you see something so blatant like this, which you would think anybody that, that is certainly an adult that isn't a complete dipstick, What's recognized that is a bad thing yeah. that should not be on your platform. Unless, unless you understand what's really going on in this country and children are a bargaining chip. That's it. And this is where I disagree. I watch the show. Stu and Pat, I want to take them on. They sat in these two chairs and the boys are off because they just don't know. They don't know this world. They're off and I love them, but they're off on this. The exploitation of children in this country is a carrot that's dangled in corporate America, in music, in film, in television. And these players play. They are playing. They are bought in. They bought into this poker game. They are invested. They are compromised. They are in compromised positions. And so, no, why wouldn't Twitter then say, you know what, we're going to dive in. The one who posted it, let's go after that person. No mention. No, nothing here. Now, for instance, more, Sarah, reason why Free Space, the new social media platform that we're launching, has to come out. And it has soft launched. Okay. Ring fenced it. And to the general wide public, it will be next week. It will be out. But it is launched. Um, it's there and it's coming. And I can tell you, I can absolutely guarantee you, there's parameters written in there that if you go after a child, yeah. you know, profiling a child or posting anything like this, we're not going to publish it. That's what you're going to hear at your door. Yeah. When it and, goes bump in the night. And it's going to be Liam Neeson. So you guys are screwed. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm glad that you said that about free space because yeah. uh, we nice. have, yeah, we've had a lot of questions about. So we made a decision it, to so. say, hey, let, 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 some, let some people into the, into the gate in the stadium and get settled content soon. Hold on. Hold on. 
days, it'll just be wide open. Awesome, yeah. and I will make sure to share it. Let me Please. know, and I'll make Please sure do. to share it on my on my platforms when it does become uh, available to all the public. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor this segment. Patriot Mobile. Uh, Patriot Mobile, good news guys, they have just expanded their coverage, which is going to make it even easier for uh, many Americans to dump the big name carriers who, hey, they're charging a bunch of money to you and then they're donating that hard earned money that you give them to all of these left leaning causes that you work so hard to fight against. We partner with Patriot Mobile because they will never send a penny to the left. By the way, they don't silence you and they are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. Uh, I know that scare uh, that uh, switching cell phone carriers sometimes scares people, but let me just inform you it's 2021. It is very, very easy. They use the same network that larger providers use, but they charge a lot less and you can keep your own phone number or you, I mean, you can get a new one if you want, but it's very easy to keep it. You can bring your new, your old phone over, or you can buy a new one, whatever you prefer. Very, very easy. You can build your own bundle with multi-line discounts and save even more then they're already, already very low prices. All you have to do is go to patriotmobile.com slash news. It is patriotmobile.com slash news. You will get free premier activation. They will set up the phone for you and a special gift if you use offer code news. Only at patriotmobile.com slash news, offer code news. Back in a minute. Uh, well, we have covered the last couple days the media's fawning all over the new president. It's so interesting how suddenly we can go back to all of these free passes and softball questions for the president. Uh, but CNN reported a, of course, now debunked narrative about the Biden administration, quote, starting from scratch with a coronavirus vaccine rollout plan, which we all know uh, to be absolutely false. They repeated it only 47 times on Thursday before Dr. Fauci himself had to come out and say, uh, no, actually, you guys are spreading misinformation. Fauci, here's a, a tweet from uh, reporter MJ Lee. Fauci said about the previous administration's vaccine distribution efforts, you can't say it was absolutely not usable at all. Uh, and he said, we certainly are not starting from scratch. But that didn't stop CNN and the amazing journalistic journalisming going over there, uh, going on over there from reporting it uh, just a mere 47 times. By the way, Chris Cuomo himself, Chris Cuomo, the Tweedledee of Tweedledee and Tweedledum, uh, also was like, Guys, this is stupid. This is not true. Saying wow. this about his own network. So when you've lost Chris Cuomo again, something's happening with Chris. I don't he's, know. He's he's correcting Don Lemon. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Maybe Chris is having an epiphany. No, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, the clock strikes. <laughs> no. I, I gave him about four seconds there. And I, no, he's not. <laughs> He'll do something stupid with his brother. Maybe he... No. Yeah, remember, Definitely. they're dumb and dumber, those two. But no, look, uh, this is what they'll do. You're, you said something earlier. They would if they could erase the birth certificate and the memory of the man Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. They would, if they could. They would go after it with a fine-tooth comb versus running the country. You know what I want to see? I want to uh, see a day-to-day... A day-to-day -day ticker of hours spent in the Oval Office. Day one, President Trump. Day one, Biden. Not here yet. <laughs> sign a stack of papers. Did he know what he was signing? Nope. nope. It was just fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's like when you sign your first autographs. <laughs> Bring them. I'll sign all day. And tomorrow you can't. Oh, sign them again. Bring more. Do you guys have some? Yeah, Nancy's got. I have some more papers for you. Let's sign them away. You know, what did you sign? I don't quite know. <laughs> I don't who, are, know. who are these people? What are you guys doing here? <laughs> oh my That's going to be the Biden administration. Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, they, this so is they, a circus show. Yeah. Well, so so that happened, right? And then, of course, I mean, Biden. The optics were great of him signing the oh, mask yeah. mandate on federal land, and then hours later being seen without a mask. Yeah. And then someone dares to ask him about it, or ask his press secretary about it, and she's like, "Well, they were celebrating." Okay, it's a celebration. They were okay. celebrating. Okay. I mean, we've got four years of this here. Look, corporate, like I told you, corporate <laughs> press, they're, they're the enemies of the people. They are extensions of the authoritarian left. They have been for a while. And all you, you're going to see just, well, you see the, how the atmosphere and the, the environment just completely changes when the presidency changes in terms of how they decide that they want to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. Tells you they've long been compromised. But unfortunately, there's a lot of American people that are too stupid to realize that. So they don't see things. We talked about the gaslighting earlier. They don't see things as legitimate unless 
it comes from uh, uh, CNN. And so what you're going to see uh, over the next four years is how they're going to butter everything up it is that he does. So he has that working on his behalf. He has mm -hmm. that to to sure. his, his extension that no matter what he does, does bad uh, or good, but mostly it'll be bad as to be expected. The thing about uh, more so the difference between what when Donald Trump did something, it was like it was going it went through it with a fine to comb, got a, all the experts to come in, say all their negative things about how bad it is that uh, whatever Donald, Donald Trump. Donald Trump has doing. lied 30,000 times exactly. since he's been president. You, you're going to see none of that yeah. when it comes sure. to Joe Biden. It'll be a, a lot of softball questions, but more so just how they cover it is going to be seen in a neutral to a very positive to a uh, positive light, mm -hmm. but that's what we're dealing with. That's what you're fighting against. And, and, and why I'm talking about, like, I don't think this can be repaired at a, at a, at a, at a like more political level. This is a cultural problem here. Um, and they have used them as extensions of themselves. A lot of these corporate entities as well, not just the media, the press, you see them with the companies, like well, what happened, you know, how did they condemn anybody burning your stuff down? No, but oh my God, the insurrection. And now, oh, well, Coca-Cola of all people, <laughs> Disney. Oh, well, we can't have that. We condemn all of that. It's extension of yeah. the authoritarian democratic uh, look, look, real evil always plays in the dark. And I think what, what President Trump did is he brought the Oval Office directly to the American people. Now, granted, he did that on Twitter, but it put it <laughs> in the forefront, yeah. right? And so it made it a, there, a, an awareness was raised up, right? I think what you're going to see here is back to the Obama days, like, where is Wally? You know, yeah. where is the president? Mm -hmm. We don't quite know. Is he in the White House? Oh, no, he's at the Final Four basketball game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, and that's why I see it's day to day, who's in the Oval Office? And I think that's going to happen. They're going to just suppress all that. Yeah. CNN's going to drive the conversation. You're not going to get direct communication like you did definitely out, out of Trump, out of the White House or the Oval Office for that matter. And that's the way the, the dark forces behind the scenes can play in yeah. the dark, right? Because Trump, in, in a way, had a flashlight. Yeah. And he was shining the light as fast as he could to the swamp. And they go, we kind of don't like that. So put Uncle Joe in there. Give him a couple of pills, you know, <laughs> let him chill. Right. And then and then we can just operate behind the scenes the way we really like to. Right. And America has the wool over their eyes. Yeah. Well, and at least while that's going on, we are getting the hard hitting questions from the journalists, such as what do you plan to make the color scheme of yes. the Oval Office? which is apparently a really, really great question it's important according right now, to the White Sarah. House press secretary. It's about his mood and his, and his, and his emotional state. Yes. Sarah, how is he going to talk to you know, Rocket Man when it's his turn if the colors aren't right? <laughs> it's true. His it's feelings. True. So remember, this is a group of people that's all about feelings, Sarah. Well, uh, to he be may not fair. not feel good enough. To, to be do the fair, job. when you're dealing with a man with dementia, maybe that <laughs> does come into play and you need to make sure everything is just right. We need so to be more sensitive. Old Joe doesn't <laughs> get, yes, yeah, so old <laughs> Joe doesn't get set off. All right, we got to take a break. Back in a minute. <laughs> All right, don't forget, uh, if you have not subscribed to the audio podcast, go do that, okay? Do us a favor, because the more of you who subscribe, rate, and review it, the more other people get a chance to listen to this show, and then they know about it, and then maybe they'll join you on YouTube in the live chat. Hello to those of you who are always there. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you guys chatting away and watching the news and why it matters. Here are a couple reviews. Uh, here's one that says, love the show. I love Sarah and the show's format. I wish I could pick one guest that is my favorite, but I like them all. Chad, Eric, and Yaku are always so fun to hear. That is from Mama Hers One. I love that spelling of my name, yeah, though. Me too. I'm I like Japanese that. now. It's yeah, how it I sounds. Like that. I like Japanese. that. I, was, I read I like it and that. I was like, I, like I mean, that. that is how it sounds. <laughs> there are a lot of people <laughs> who are like, how do you Japanese, spell that guy's yeah. name? Better talk to me in Japanese now because I'm affiliating Japanese today. <laughs> well, you identify as it, and that is how it works. That's how it works. That is everything. We've got one more from Reagan. Lincoln, informative and fun. I love me some Eric July. We got some oh, Eric July love appreciate that. today. Oh, yeah. love. Thank you. There was a heart emoji. Yeah, attached I love. To that too. <laughs> love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe she's a gamer. Maybe we'll see. There's a love. Button. Well, he's taken. He is okay. taken. So, uh, for real. Uh, but you could see your review read live on the news and why it matters. So you got to go get your reviews in. We'll see you guys Monday.